You know what, no, I can't do this yet. It's too early, I need caffeine. Let's go. getting better. I can feel it coming on. I think I need some extra help this morning. Now we're getting somewhere. Espresso and Rockstar Energy Drink. Whew, that's what I'm talking about. Hi friends, how y'all doing? Welcome once again to another video. I'm Colt Caparoon, and we are gonna go over some sweet stuff today. So thank you all for tuning in again. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button, and thank you for hitting the bell. I don't know what symbol I was about to make. Thank you for hitting the bell icon next to the subscribe. Give me a thumbs up, and if you liked it, of course. If you don't like it, don't give me a thumbs up. I'm not asking for anything for free. Uh, and drop me a comment, let me know what you think. If you have something to add to this, I would love to hear from you. But we are gonna go over one trick, just one, it's a big one, but just one trick that will make every singer sound better. It doesn't matter whether you're on the stage or in the studio, it's gonna make everyone sound better. The reason why this is a video, because I'm not a vocal coach, like I'm not, the reason why this is a video is because I've never heard anyone say this. I've never heard anyone put it like this. This one technique has become a, an integral part of my day-to-day -day work, and it's something that I coach Every single singer that's ever in this room, they all get uh, instructed this same way, and the results are undeniable. Let's get into it. So we've all seen this a million times. You're watching a singer on stage, and they get up to the high note, and they take that microphone, and they, oh, they do this with it. They pull it way away from their mouth, and next thing you know, they're, they're singing into nothing, because the microphone's like way out here, and they're... So why do they do that? This is one of the things that I need to go over in order for you to understand the technique that I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. There's a couple reasons why singers do that. One is to keep from overdriving the capsule in the microphone. The actual microphone itself has a threshold for how loud signal sound can go into it before it starts distorting. So that's one of the reasons is, is they pull away as because most singers, the higher they go, the, the louder it gets. That's most singers. I'm not gonna get into whether that's proper vocal technique or not, not what this video is about, but most singers, that's the case. The higher the note they sing, the louder they get. And so they pull off the microphone in an attempt to keep the microphone capsule from distorting, from overdriving the capsule, uh, also to keep from overdriving the microphone preamp. Every microphone has to go into a preamp doesn't matter, like every microphone, the microphone that's on this camera right now is going, plugging right into the camera, but there's a preamp inside the camera with an adjustable level. So if you are listening to something through a microphone, it is going through a preamp, whether you realize it or not. I'm trying to cover all the bases here so everyone can get something out of this. So they pull off to keep from overdriving the microphone. They pull off to keep from overdriving the mic preamp and driving it into distortion. And a lot of singers also do this because when they're singing real soft and quiet, then they need, still need to be able to hear themselves, right? So, but as they get really loud, by the time they turn it up loud enough where they can hear themselves when they're singing at a very moderate level, and then they hit that big note, then it's just ripping their head off. It's just, just cutting their teeth out uh, through the monitors or headphones or whatever. And so this is kind of a natural reaction for singers to pull off when they get loud. So every singer you've ever seen on TV, Mariah Carey singing the ball drop in Times Square, uh, and she hits those high notes, if she's even actually singing. I probably could have picked a better person as an example. But she hits those high notes and she pulls way off the microphone. And uh, it's for all of these things combined. Okay, so the next thing that we gotta go over real quick, so that way this technique makes sense, because you, you kinda have to understand why you should do this. Every microphone, 
This is a, a large diaphragm condenser. This is it for in the studio tracking vocals, but it will be exactly the same for any microphone except for Omni pickup pattern microphones. They have very little of this, but every microphone has what's called a proximity effect. And what that means is that the closer your voice is to the microphone, the closer a source is, whatever it is, acoustic guitar, you know, drums, whatever, the closer it is, the thicker it sounds into the microphone. And the further away, the thinner it sounds, the, the less low end it has. Every microphone has a different pickup pattern and every microphone has a different proximity effect. And it, there's, this gets really in depth and really nerdy. So I'm not gonna go into all that, but the basics of what you need to know is that every microphone has what's called a proximity effect and the closer something is to it, the thicker it sounds. That's the basis for this whole technique. So at this point in my career, I've been doing this 18 years and I've mixed front of house a ton of times and I've played thousands of shows on stage myself where I'm singing lead and harmonies. I've recorded hundreds or maybe a thousand singers in the studio. Uh, and this applies to every singer I've ever been around and every singer I've ever worked with. Pretty much every singer, the higher the note they sing, the thinner their voice gets. But the higher note they sing, the louder they get. So it's a very interesting thing that when a singer is singing in their normal range, very comfortably, their voice is nice and thick and full, or whatever the character of their voice is, right? But then the higher they sing, the thinner their voice gets, and simultaneously, the further away they pull the microphone in an attempt to keep that volume the same, right? So you're like, you're singing nice and low and you're like, ma 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 me. And then you get into the high note and it's like, yeah! <laughs> Pretty good example though. Wildly different amount of low end coming out of my voice. That was kind of an extreme example. I'm sorry for everyone that had to hear that. That was. It was terrible. But it's a pretty extreme example, but it gets the point across. I have lots of low end in my voice at a certain range, and when I go way up high, there's zero low end. It's, it's shrill, it's nasally, it's annoying to listen to. So, here's the technique. Rather than pull off the mic, when you need all the help in the thickness that you can get, when, you, when your voice is the thinnest sounding, rather than pull off, right, and you're like, when you when you hit your big notes, pull off and, and you get away, just turn off axis, okay? You're singing into a microphone, it's all nice and pretty sounding and, and wonderfully melodic and you're nailing every note and every bit of the performance. As you go to hit those high notes, just turn. Just turn off the side of the microphone. And so what that does is it redirects uh, your sound away from the capsule, making it quieter. So you get all of the benefits of pulling way off in terms of it, uh, it being quieter and like you're getting further away from the microphone, you're redirecting away from the microphone. You get all of the benefits of that without the drawback of the microphone sounding thinner. So in those times when you need, you need all the help that you can get because your voice is the thinnest when you're singing the highest notes, instead of pulling way off, just turn to the side. Just turn off axis a little bit and the distance remains mostly the same. And what that does is that keeps all of that proximity effect of the microphone in play, but you're also taking away volume that's hitting the microphone because you're turning off axis. And so this, in my opinion, is the best of both worlds. Uh, like I said, it, thousands of gigs running front of house for hundreds of singers, recording hundreds and hundreds or maybe thousands of singers in the studio over the past 18 years. I kind of came up with this maybe uh, five years ago and I've been having every singer that I work with do this and it, it makes a big difference in my productions for me. It, it makes a big difference in terms of being able to keep the vocal close and present in a mix and uh, and keeping the tone, the overall tone, relatively similar, even though the tone of your voice is changing as you work through your register. So, that is the technique. Turn to the side instead of pull off. I hope that helps somebody. It's worked a ton for me. It's made a lot of my vocals sound better. And I know, I, at least try it. I'm sure that there's gonna be plenty of comments that are like, you're stupid, this is a ridiculous technique. Just try it. Try it both ways. Have a singer, get a singer that has a, a wide range 
and have them sing through a part and have them do what they naturally do. Because almost every singer is going to do this. Almost every singer is going to do that naturally. Have them do that <clears throat> and then instruct them to just turn. Now, it'll take some practice, right? Because obviously the amount that you turn off the microphone plays a pretty big part in what it sounds like. But in the same way that a lot of singers have worked on this a whole bunch, just have them work on this a little bit. Do a few takes each way. See if you can get a better result. I get better results 99% of the time doing that. So almost every session that I work on, I instruct the singer to do that. And I have to explain to them this same thing. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe and hit the bell. If you could, I really appreciate it. Hit me up on Instagram, at Colt Caparoon. Uh, hit me up on Facebook if it's your thing. Check out my website, coltcaparoon.com. For those of you that don't know, I'm a producer, I'm a mix engineer, uh, I play guitar on a ton of records, I do some mastering, I do some artist development, I do some social media coaching, I do all of that. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I've been doing this uh, about 18 years. Um, I've played like 3,500 gigs for my career. The channel is growing so fast and I know most of you that are subscribing don't really know who I am or, or know anything about me, so none of that's to brag. Everything that I say in these videos comes from a place of experience. It will never be a piece of advice that I offer here or on Instagram or anywhere else unless it's something that I have thoroughly worked through, found something that worked for me, and I'm successful at the thing that I'm talking about. So everything that I'm going to ever talk about on this channel will come from a place of success, and I've done it, and it's worked for me, and I hope it works for you, and I hope it helps someone. So... Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you soon. Peace.